Okay, so now we're going to introduce an algorithm which is going to help us find an Eulerian circuit in an Eulerian graph. So we know we can determine if a graph is Eulerian. And once we know if a graph is Eulerian, we're like, hey, okay, can we find the circuit? Because the circuit is very important to us. It's going to help us basically use it for things like your flight paths or your DNA sequences and sequencing and so on. So let's go through the algorithm. So the first part of the algorithm is called Fleury's algorithm, but the first part is you start with any vertex. with any vertex. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add one of the incident edges of that vertex to your circuit. So you're going to choose any incident edge, but there's going to be a way to choose the incident edge. So any incident edge such that when you're doing this, basically, it does not disconnect the graph. So such that it does not disconnect the graph. And that basically means that bridges are your last resort. So if the edge is a bridge, it is your absolute last resort to choose. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you are going to add this edge to your circuit. And when you do that, you remove it from your graph. And remove from the graph. Okay? So you start off by choosing any vertex, and then you look for an incident edge to the vertex. And when you choose the incident edge, you just make sure that it doesn't disconnect the graph. So in other words, your bridges are going to be last kind of situation. And you add this edge to your circuit. And you remove it from the graph so that you can't reselect or go you know, through that edge again. Then you're going to continue by choosing the new vertex, which is obviously the one that's connected, you know, to your edge. So, you know, your edge has two end vertices. One of those vertices would have been your initial ver vertex, your starting vertex. You add that incident edge, and now, voila, there's that vertex. So you actually look at that vertex, so you continue with that new vertex. Okay? And you just repeat this part here, basically. So repeating until all the edges in your graph are in the circuit. OK, so it, that, that's the process. But let's go do an example, because obviously examples make things a lot clearer. Okay, so we're going to do an example of finding the Eulerian circuit using Fleury's algorithm. So first things up, we need a graph. So we are going to utilize this graph. In our example, we know it's an Eulerian graph because we're not going to find an Eulerian circuit in a graph that is not Eulerian. So this is D, this is E, this is C, this is A, and this is D. Okay, so... The first part of Fleury's algorithm is you start at any vertex. So I'm going to start at A just because I can. So our Eulerian circuit, you want to write it up here as we go through. So we're starting at A. Okay. Now, the next thing that you need to do is look at all the incident edges. So you look at all the incident edges. That's A to C. That's A to D. That's A to E. That's A to B. And you check, are any of them bridges? None of those are bridges. They're all, you know, parts of cycles. So we can choose any of them. Okay? So we choose any of them, and I'm going to choose D, A to D. So we've highlighted that. So what we do now, you can do it on the graph. So we have A to D. Now we know that the red is no longer part of the graph. The black is the original graph. Or you can actually go ahead and draw it out and then remove that edge so you can see what's going on. So if we were to do it, we just basically draw it again. And now we have that one exists, that one exists, that one exists, that exists. Well, actually, let me just draw the graph as is and then remove that AD. Okay. So there we had the original graph. 
we've now chosen AD, so now that one is no longer there. So when you're choosing, you're choosing it based on this lower graph or just whatever is just plain black on the top graph. Okay, so now we're at D, and again we're utilizing Fleury's algorithm, which says we just check all the incident edges. So D to E, D to B, and D to C. If any of them are bridges, those are the ones we choose last, and we go on from there. So none of these are bridges at the moment. They're not going to disconnect the graph. So we can choose any of them. I'm going to choose D to E. Okay, so we choose that one. What we can also do is we can put the direction there so we know the direction that our circuit is taking. So here we're going from D to E. We put that down in our circuit. Okay, just going to remove that part there. So now we're sitting at E. And again, what we do is we check all the incident edges. And just by the way, at the bottom, we remove that one. So we look at all the incident edges again. So we look at EB, we look at EA, and we look at EC. Are any of those bridges? No. So we can choose any of them. What we're going to do here is we're going to choose EB. So we're going to go E to B. So now we sit in there. So we say E to B. Now we at B, we do the exact same thing. We look at all the incident edges, and don't forget, we're, for the bottom one, that's removed. So that's what the graph again looks like at the moment. Now we at B, we look at all its incident edges. So that's BC, that's BD, and that's BA. And if you look down here, again, are any of them bridges? No. So we can choose any of them. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to choose BA for the fun of it. So we're going to go that way. BA. Right. So now we're sitting at A and we look at its incident edges. So that's AC and that's AE. And again, we look at the case of if we remove any of them, will it disconnect the graph? So again, that is not, nothing's going to happen there, but let's just choose a C. Right, so now we're sitting at C, and that's gone. Okay, so now when we at A, when we at C, the incident edges are B, E, C, D, C, and C, B. Are any of those bridges? Now, Again, just look at the black part of the graph. It's not as clear in the top image, but if you look at the bottom image, you can see a very clear, you know, distinction that EC is a bridge. So you don't choose EC. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose CD. So we're going to go from C to D. Don't forget we should have put C up there. So C to D, we write that down. And we take that away. Okay, so now we at D. D only has one option. So that's the one we choose. So we go from D to B. That goes away. We go from B to C. Okay, that one goes away. And then from C to E. That one goes away. Let's just rub it out completely there. So from E to C, and then we go from C, from E to A. Okay. And there you have your Eulerian circuit. So you see, it is a circuit because its beginning and its end are the same. And all the edges of the graph are covered because now when you look at the leftover graph, you see there are no edges left. So this has all the edges. Okay. So we can use Fleury's algorithm to find an Eulerian walk. There is going to be just one subtle difference in the algorithm. So instead of starting at any vertex, you have to start at a vertex of odd degree. 
So I've started any vertex of odd degree. So remember when we went through all those theorems and that we said, you know, situations of your graph will contain an Eulerian walk if there are either two or zero vertices of odd degree. And then we were very, very specific in saying, listen, if you want just an Eulerian walk that is not an Eulerian circuit, you're going to have two vertices of odd degree. So now you're going to select one of those two vertices of odd degree to begin your Eulerian walk with. And that makes sense because you want those to be the outer ones. Okay? Then you're going to follow basically the same process. So then you choose an incident edge, making sure that you choose bridges last. So why? Because you don't want them to disconnect the graph. And you add that edge to your circuit, or in this case, to your walk. And you delete it from the graph. And then you continue this piece here, basically, until you have no more edges in your graph. Continue adding Uh, let's do this clip, clip. Continue repeating from the new vertex until you have deleted all the edges from the graph. And then you'll have your layering walk. So let's go do an example. Okay, so let's do an example of finding an Eulerian walk utilizing Fleury's algorithm. So to find an Eulerian walk, remember the only thing you have to really do is that's different from finding Eulerian circuit using Fleury's algorithm is that you have to choose one of your vertices that are of an odd degree as your starting point. So let's use the most basic of graphs. So you have A, B, C, D. This one you should be familiar with now. It was used in all the examples. You have this kind of situation. So when you're choosing your starting vertex, it's either going to be B or it's going to be D because they have order or well, they have a degree of three. Okay, so let's choose D. So we choose D as our starting point, and that's going to be our layering walk that you're going to discover. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through the entire process like you did with the layering circuit now, but obviously you are not going to begin and end at the same place because this is not an Eulerian graph. Right. And therefore, it doesn't have an Eulerian circuit. So we start at D, and we move on. Let's go D to C. We go look again, are any of them bridges and so on. Again, go through those checks. Now we have C to B. So we have D, C, B. We look at all the incident edges. And we determine, are any of them going to disconnect the graph? If they don't disconnect the graph, we can choose any of them. I'm going to choose BD, and then DA, and then AB. So BD, DA, AB. And that gives us an Eulerian walk. We could have gone a different route. So we could have also gone AB, CD. We've gone through this process. We start off at D. We go to C. So very, very similar. D, C. We go to B. But instead of going to D, we could go to A. Then from A, we kind of have to go to D. Then from D, we go to B. Okay, so that's a different Eulerian walk, utilizing the same principles. So again, the only thing that's different when you use Fleury's algorithm to find an Eulerian walk is you have to select one of your odd degree vertices as your starting point. And you should end up at the end, because we chose D here, you should end up at the other vertices odd degree, or the other odd degree vertice, which is B. And you notice there as well. 
Now, if we had selected B as our starting point, we would end with D.